Hello folks, Pastor Mike Hoggard here, pastor of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri and head of Prophetic Research Ministry with another Watchman video broadcast. You know, that thing we just keep doing every week, over and over again. Why? Because so many stupid people out there are doing so many stupid things, some of them in politics, some of them in religion, some of them might even be right here at our secret broadcasting compound at 1233 American Legion Drive. Anyway, I am I'm a little upset. I don't mind telling you that I'm, I'm just a little jealous. I was always the kid in PE class that when they picked teams, it came down to me and the other kid. That we were the last ones, always getting picked. I wasn't much of an athlete, and so I had this, I don't know if it's like a syndrome or something like that where, you know, you, you get, maybe, it's, maybe I can come up with my own syndrome, picked last syndrome, okay? Or not picked, not at all syndrome. That's what it is. Uh, there's an article here on World Net, World Net Daily. Some of you sent me links to other articles that were dealing with this. Chuck Baldwin is one of them. Uh, but anyway, uh, on World Net Daily, they said, Beck, Farah, Bachman, Ron Paul on Patriot hit list. Wait, wait a minute. Let me see if I can do that. Take a look at, uh, it's got a picture of Glenn Beck there. Did I get it right? No, I don't want to be Glenn Beck because um, he's a Mormon. But anyway, uh, it says, what do Glenn Beck, Ron Paul, Michelle Bachman, and Joseph Farah have in common? Now, why am I jealous? My name doesn't show up on the list. I'll read some of the list here in a little bit. Uh, they're all prominently featured in a new, new list of 40 quote-unquote patriots and enablers that a left-leaning group thinks Americans should be concerned about. In its new report titled, Meet the Patriots, the Southern Poverty Law Center, here they go again, uh, states, in the last year and a half, militias and the larger anti-government patriot movement have exploded, accompanied by the rapid expansion of other sectors of the radical right. This spectacular growth is the result of several factors, including anger over major political, demographic, and economic changes in America, along with the polar popularization of radical ideas and conspiracy theories by ostensibly mainstream politicians and media commentators. It defines patriots as, quote, people who generally believe that the federal government is an evil entity that is engaged in a secret conspiracy to impose martial law, herd those who resist into concentration camps, and force the United States into a socialistic new world order. You see, that's me. I believe that. I, let's see. I believe, um, I believe the federal government is evil. Um, I, don't believe, I don't believe government itself is, is evil, but I believe that the system right now that we have right now, it is anti-God and anti-Bible. So I believe it's, and, and see, evil means sin. And so if there are a bunch of sinners that are running the country, then the government itself is going to be sinful. So yes, I believe that. Uh, then it talks about um, uh, secret conspiracy to impose martial law. This is not a conspiracy. These are presidential decision directives, directives or executive orders that have been signed for the last 40 years mandating that in such an occurrence as like a, uh, some kind of a meteor crash or some sort of civil or economic emergency, they will impose martial law. It's in the books. This is not a theory, people. It's in the books. Uh, let's see, heard those who resist into concentration camps. I believe those are coming, and I believe that they may not exist now. I don't have the, I don't have the evidence. I don't have the proof. There's been a lot of stuff out there. I don't know, but I believe they're coming, and I believe uh, Halliburton had the contract to build these things. That's not a theory either. The documentation's there. Force the United States into socialistic new world order. Duh, that's what it says on the back of our dollar bill. This is where we're headed. So I believe in all these things. How come I'm not on the list? You have guys like Chuck Baldwin. A lot of you uh, read him every day. Uh, let's see here. Who else is on this list? Joseph Farah, CEO of World Net Daily. He's like eighth on the list. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Alex Jones. <laughs> Who's Alex Jones? Uh, get that guy out of here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see other names you might uh, know. Larry Pratt, executive director of Gun Owners of America. Ooh, that's a dangerous guy there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Orly Tates, California attorney, a leader in the push to make President Obama disclose his U.S. UF, US birth certificate. Uh, by the way, that uh, Army uh, lieutenant colonel that uh, 
uh, decided he wasn't going to go back to Afghanistan because uh, he wanted proof that Obama was the president of the United States. He wanted proof the birth certificate. They, I, from what I read today, they actually charged him now with... Um, I don't know, what is it called? It's not desertion, uh, disobeying orders or something like that. He was ordered to go to Afghanistan. He's not going, so they've officially charged him. And I'm anxious to see how this is going to turn out. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see here. Who else is on here? Andrew Napolitano. Now, I want to tell you what. You ever watch this guy, Andrew Napolitano? I don't know where he stands with the Lord. But I like how this guy talks. This guy, is he agrees with me in that I am a constitutionalist. I believe that people ought to follow the Bible, and I believe that people ought to follow the Constitution. That's all I'm saying. Um, the conspiracies, the conspiracy theorists are nowhere near as dangerous, and I've said this before, the conspiracy theorists are nowhere near as dangerous as the conspirators who are out trying to plan a socialistic new world order. No doubt in my mind that they're trying to do that. Andrew Napolitano, attorney, former state judge in New York, in New Jersey, Fox News Channel legal analyst and lecturer, and then, of course, 40th on the list, they had to throw in Ron Paul because everybody has his bumper sticker on the back of their car. Um, but anyway, uh, these people are, they're not doing our country any favors. They think that they're warning America about us evil people that are out there. But I'll tell you, all this is doing, and I, and I want you to get a hold of this. All this is doing is those who actually believe that there is a conspiracy, believe that things are not right in our government, things, uh, people that believe that um, there is socialism creeping in, all of these people, and there are hundreds of of millions of them in this country. All of this is doing, the Southern Poverty Law Center issues this decree, this uh, report outlining and de detailing all these evil people that are trying to subvert the government of America. And they're crazy. They're, there's something wrong with these people. I guarantee you not one of these people who firmly believe in the Constitution, believe in the Bible, believe in all these things is going to say, well, man, I, 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 don't, I, don't want, I don't want to be on a list. I don't. I don't want to be considered like you know crazy, like a like I carry around a tea bag all the time. Um, that's not gonna. That's not gonna make anybody say, "Hey, hey, hey I, I was just in here, you know, to meet women." That's not what they're gonna do. Um, this is gonna. This is basically, and I'm helping lob the grenades. I understand that. Uh, this is basically, a, they are creating the Southern Poverty Law Center, and if you remember all of these anti-militia reports, this, uh, this army general that says millennialism is dangerous to American uh, foreign policy and this and that, all these people are doing is are ratcheting up the argument and the debate, and they're stoking the fire, as it were, because those people who are firmly entrenched and believe what it is that we believe we're not backing down because the Southern Poverty Law Center says it's not politically correct to. We're going to stand our ground. But I think, I think, I'm pretty sure that's what this kind of stuff is all about. There's really no doubt in my mind about it. I just came back last weekend from Harrison, Arkansas. I had a great meeting down there. We videotaped uh, the, uh, the speech down there, the sermon, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're going to have it available in our watchers packets coming out next month. We have the DVDs. Uh, Alicia is burning them right and left as we speak. Um, we're burning the DVDs now. It is called Baphomet, the God of Transformation. Now, if you remember, I had talked about doing something like this here a while back, and the Lord laid it on my heart to do it last weekend uh, in front of uh, the audience down there. I had great people down there, some good friends, and uh, I just want to tell you all I love you and had a good time down there and appreciate Pastor Lonnie Burks of the Oak Lane Free Will Baptist Church in Harrison, Arkansas for his... Uh, uh, for his generosity down there. Great man of God. I love him to death and other men down there. Anyway, uh, we talked about this in that, in that Baphomet video that uh, basically you're seeing the polarization of the United States of America. You're seeing the right wing and the left wing rise up. And this is antithesis, or this is thesis, and this is antithesis. And the whole idea, the Hegelian, uh, the Hegelian argument, or the idea of Baphomet himself is that to get these two to clash and meld together so that you can dissolve the entire structure of the United States of America and bring in a new world order. This is not conspiracy theory, people. This is fact. We know it's fact, number one, because the Bible tells us. Number two, a lot of you have seen the documentation. You, you see it with your eyes going on. 
Um, there has never been a more polarizing president of the United States. Uh, uh, Barack Obama is that guy. He represents the transformation of America. And I told the audience down there last weekend, and I'll tell you today, you better pray that somebody doesn't try to take a pot shot at President Barack Obama or his family. You better pray that that does not happen because I'm telling you that we will see probably the worst things that have ever happened in America happen right in front of our very, very eyes and it will be as a result of the left and the and and the uh, the left I almost said the white the left and the right wings clashing together to meld into a new synthetic world order. This is where they're taking America. Uh, is Google part of that? Yeah. Remember now, last year Google went to the Bilderberg meeting. Okay, They went to the Bilderberg meeting. You know what I, I'm going to do real quick? Because I've got something that I really want to get to. And I, I want to I keep you interested. I really do. Because I want you to, I want you to know... Um, in fact, let me pull this book out here real quick called The Two Babylons. We started printing it uh, last week. Several of you have ordered copies of it. Written in the 1850s by Alexander Hislop. It is an outstanding source on understanding uh, not only what's going on in Roman Catholicism uh, and the practices they use, but the mystery religions in general. Remember, Roman Catholicism is like the biggest mystery religion on planet Earth. Uh, but anyway, I was reading in this book and something just jumped out at me. And I'm going to be talking about in this broadcast near the end of it what's called Shakti. Shakti. That's an Indian term or Shakti pot. And I'm going to show you, I guarantee you, your eyes are good. You're going to go, what in the world? You're going to see something maybe you've never seen before, so hang on to it. All right. Um, thought Google was harmless. Think again. Power meter may measure home compliance with Obama carbon caps. You know, I, maybe, maybe just one of these days, I already get me like a cap and put Obama carbon on it, and I'll wear it, and it'll be my Obama carbon cap. Anyway, just say, um, if you thought Google was just a harmless internet search engine, think again. Jerome Corsi's Red Alert warns. Red Alert reports Google is backing Obama administration efforts to impose carbon taxes through EPA regulations, declaring carbon dioxide to be noxious to human health through cap-and-trade legislation or through hidden provisions buried deeply within an energy bill. Google's also positioning to assume the role of energy police in a brave new world controlled by leftist environmentalists where emitting carbon dioxide will be tantamount to committing a crime and uh, using more energy than absolutely needed will be considered an offense against nature, punishable by a government fine or maybe even worse. Of course, he wrote. Now, I'm going to stop right here and just, you know, I, I'm recording this on, let's see, what's today, the 23rd? Yesterday was Green Day. In fact, I'm going to do this in honor of Green Day. I'm going to make all this background behind me disappear like this. Now we're honoring Green Day, like green screen behind me. Anyway, let me bring it back. You didn't know I could do that, did you? All right, anyway. Um, but I don't know that I've ever really talked about this, but all of this that you see behind me, all these monitors, they, they, they're not real. I had, I've had people come by our secret broadcasting compound. I don't know how they found us, but they come by our secret broadcasting compound and they, they, they where's all the monitors at? Uh, they, they're not real, okay? Anyway, I don't know if you knew that or not, but that's, that's how we do it here. Uh, everything's low-tech, I promise you. Everything's low-tech. Uh, but anyway, um, yesterday was uh, Earth Day, and of course they released the Avatar Earth-worshipping Pandora goddess-loving movie on Earth Day, and they advertise it that way because they want you to get the connection between being environmentally friendly, which is basically worshipping Mystery Babylon the Great, uh, and their movie. And so Obama and uh, Joseph Biden, the 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 president and the vice president, both are going, now watch this now, they're both scheduled in New York to speak on Earth Day about environmental causes. They both fly in Air Force One and Air Force Two to these massive, I mean these things are huge, both of them flying almost at the same time into New York. They're speaking within miles of each other and while the Air Force One and Two is landing and waiting on the tarmac, none of these other airplanes can land. So they're like burning like millions of gallons of fuel up in the air, but they are environmental friendly, okay? Uh, maybe they should be taxed. 
Uh, let's see here. Dan Riker, Director of Climate Change and Energy Initiatives at Google, claimed in general terms a carbon price will do a lot to advance the competitiveness of these technologies that offer serious climate reductions, help, our, help for our energy security, increase our domestic fuels, and create all sorts of jobs. Isn't that great of them? As Red Alert has warned, Google has an internet-based power meter ready to be installed in American homes so the energy police of the future can monitor how efficiently they use energy. Get ready for the new world. In fact, they'll probably have it as an app on your iPhone. Uh, you'll probably uh, hit some kind of button on your iPhone and, and uh, they'll record exactly how much uh, carbon emissions is coming out of you uh, at the time. Uh, but anyway, this cap and, if you remember this cap and trade thing we talked about last year, it's coming back up again in a regurgitated form and um, noted very conservative ultra right wing Senator from South Carolina, Lindsey Graham, helped write the bill. Lindsey Graham ready to ram cap and trade tax through Senate. In February, top global warming expert Professor Phil Jones, the former director of the University of East Anglia's Climate Research Unit, admitted that global warming was a fraud. Uh, and then it goes down to say next week, Lindsey Graham will push the biggest tax on the American public in the nation's history. Um, Graham, along with fellow progressive John Kerry and Joe Lieberman, are going to push their cap-and-trade bill in the U.S. Senate. Um, now, Lindsey Graham is supposed to be one of these conservative, you know, one of these good guys that is not going to stand for all this stuff that's going on in the Obama administration. And he helps write the bill for this new cap-and-trade tax. Now, he's a Republican. And I would say to all you people in South Carolina, vote this rascal out. Get it? Is he South Carolina or North Carolina? Anyway, one of the Carolinas, get this rascal out of office. Now, there are rumors flying around. I don't know. I don't know uh, if it's true what the rumors are saying, but the rumors are saying that Lindsey Graham is being outed as a homosexual. I don't know that's true. Pray for the man. He needs to be saved is what he needs. But if that's true, then it's no wonder that, and I'll tell you this. Let me, let me just address this. I don't know if you're aware of this or not. Politicians, most politicians, especially ones on a national level, they're not very moral people. I mean, they're just really, they're not. They're not. Uh, you remember the DC madam. In fact, go, go back on our blog, the hog blog, mikehogger.com. I wrote a blog, uh, what was it, maybe two years ago, um, about the death of the DC madam. And you ought to see the picture that's on there. Go, go to our MikeHoggard.com website and search that out. And uh, maybe Jazz, our webmaster, uh, can bring that to the forefront and just kind of repost that blog if she gets a chance to uh, with one of her eight arms that she uses to do everything she does. Um, but anyway, um, the DC Madam runs this high volume uh, high class escort service in Washington D.C., and she has this black look of black book of everybody's names on there. Um, and I can tell you that D.C., Washington D.C., of course, Mystery Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots, and Abominations of the Earth. Uh, she's running the show there, and I can tell you there's probably a lot of physical harlotry going on there. But anyway, D.C. is probably one of the most corrupt cities in the world, much less the nation. And you can imagine some senator, some congressman going in there going, I'm going to change America. I'm going to do what the people want. And all of a sudden he's found himself in bed with some gal or some guy, who knows. And there's somebody in the background taking pictures of him. And they all of a sudden they say, we want you to vote this. We want you to do this. We want you to do that. And if you don't do it our way, we'll put you out. We'll expose you. We'll do all kinds of things. So you can just imagine that kind of stuff goes on. You know what the Bible's right? The Bible is right. Uh, in Deuteronomy, God said, if you, if you get into the land and you want a king, uh, go ahead and pick one. It has to be one of your own people. Hmm, imagine that. He has to be, even God said he had to be a citizen. Um, he has to be one of your own people. And, uh, oh, by the way, I want you to write him a copy of the law so that he can not only live by it, but rule by it. Gary Hart, you remember back in the 90s, Gary Hart talks, you know, he's, he's caught in adultery. Bill Clinton as caught in, 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 at best, at best, adultery, if not rape, while he's in office. Maybe not as president, uh, but certainly as governor and different things like that. He's caught in these things. He has these whole things going, and everybody says, 
it's just, you know, it's just his, what he does. You know, it's his hobby, you know. And, um, but I'm telling you that there are enough people out there who know all the dirty secrets of all these politicians who use that against them. And it's no wonder we have what's going on in our country right now. You know, God, God's just right 100% of the time. Uh, here we're talking about Google monitoring everybody. Here's one. New speed cameras trap motorists from space. A new type of speed camera which can use satellites to measure average speed uh, over long distances are being tested in Britain. Uh, the cameras which combine number plate reading technology with a global positioning satellite receiver are similar to those used in roadworks. The AA said it believed the new system could cover a network of streets as opposed to a straight line and was probably geared up to zones in residential areas. Um, they're going to be watching you from... 30, 60, 100 miles up in space. I don't know how far that is. They're going to be watching you from outer space. Okay, 300 miles from outer space. And they're going to be watching you and checking how, how fast it takes you to get from one point to another. You know, you can just imagine there's a cop sitting up there with a radar gun going down like that, going, uh, yeah, Houston, we got him. Uh, folks, we're fixing to be watched in every area of our life. And I will tell you, Christians, I will tell you, believers, um, if you've got things hidden in the closet, Now's the time to give them out and give them to Jesus because I'm telling you, they're going to monitor everything that you're doing, probably already are, cell phone conversations, emails, this and that and the other. Everything is being monitored and um, now our speed, and by the way, by the way, let me, let me pull this back here because I just had a thought. I don't think for a second that this satellite watching speeders go up and down the road I don't think for a second that that's really what it's up there for, okay? And you shouldn't either. Biometrics of worry, they're already here. A new wave of controversy is developing in Washington over ways to deal with illegal immigration as senators consider using biometrics, the unchangeable physical attributes of fingerprints or other identifying marks. Uh, President Reagan likened a 1981 biometric plan to the biblical mark of the beast, and even President Clinton said the idea evoked Big Brother, according to a key opponent. But biometrics already uh, is in use in schools nationwide, with one company boasting that some one million students use its fingerprint-based technology for student lunches. I had to laugh when I was reading this. Uh, the issue arose over uh, the last week in the Summit School District in New, New Jersey, where officials confirmed their schools are being set up with biometrics on a building-by-building -building basis. Parents at Washington Elementary recently received a notice that the school was implementing a biometric finger scanning identification program in an effort to provide our elementary students with a safe, here it is now, a safe and easy way to identify themselves when entering the school and using the cafeteria. They're not worried about them stealing books out of the library. You know what, they're, they're, it's like they're worried about some kid getting in line at the lunch line at school and stealing a $2.50 lunch. And so we're going to go to biometrics. We're going to scan their fingerprint. We're going to swab their mouth and get their DNA. And we're going to have it. You know, when I was, man, when I was in school... Uh, boy, I, I just, I'm getting to the age now where I'm starting to tell my kids, yeah, back when I was a little lad, back when I, back in the old days, this is how we used to do it. We had a little card like this, and it, this, uh, this was as high tech as it was. It was this green lunch card, and uh, it had, was pre-printed by the school, and it had, uh, it had an identifying mark on it, my name. And the teacher would write my name on there and write the teacher's name on there. And then had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And we would go in and there was a lady sitting there at our elementary school with a mole on her face with hair growing out of it. But she was a really nice lady. And they would take that and we would stand there in line. And we would present our card and she would go clip like that. And we would take our card and we would give it back to the teacher. We didn't have to show our driver's license lay our palm down on a scanner. Just Here again, if you believe that this has anything to do with um, your kids and somebody stealing lunch money, it's, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of in my life. Identification, monitoring, making sure that everybody's where they are doing what they're... And you know what? You know what? Let, let, me, let me play. Uh, I don't want to play devil's advocate here because I'll never advocate for the devil. But let me just play this advocate here, okay? We are, we are a lawless society in this country. 
There's no doubt in my mind about it. There are people out there who are sneaky, uh, vile. They are lawless. They're sinful. They will steal people blind. They will do anything in the world for anything they can get their hands on. And you know what? We've just gotten to a place in our society that our founders feared would happen. Our founders believed that as long as the Bible was the law for people's lives, then the Constitution should remain limited and the laws of the country should remain limited. But systematically, we have removed the Bible from our lives, from our churches, from, from everything in life. We've removed that Bible, and so now we have to have new laws, new monitoring systems. They were talk, talking on radio this week uh, up in North St. Louis, high crime area. They're talking about putting cameras on street corners, and somebody said, oh, that's not going to work. Well, I'll tell you what, if you knew that you were being monitored, you wouldn't, I mean, you always know if somebody's looking, you're not going to do anything. Um, but this is where we're headed. Do I advocate it? Man, I don't know. Because, see, if I'm not doing anything wrong, I really don't have anything to worry about. Yeah, I, you know, I want some privacy in my life and my marriage and my family and things like that. But I, but, and I know they don't stop there. But I'll tell you that I would like the guy down the street monitored. I'll tell you, I, like, I would like some of the people in this town monitored. And so I'll tell you, we're, we're getting what we've got coming in this country. This is, what, this, is, this is what it is. And we all know where it's leading to. Okay, Total domination and total control. That's where it's leading to. Uh, one of our watchers sent me this. Uh, and and, and I, I tell you what, I, if... I don't like to take credit for anything. I really don't. Um, and you know, you know, I was just kidding about being on that list. Okay, I'm going, Phew. man. I'm glad I'm not on the list. Um, I don't care if my name gets out on a list or doesn't end up on a list. I don't. Uh, I don't want to take credit for anything. That's why you know we give our videos away. My goodness, we're practically giving our books away. Um, and uh, the copyrights and things like that. I mean, we, we, I don't care who gets the credit for the information that we put out. I really don't. Uh, but one of the things that I, that I know that our ministry helps people do is that it helps people see um, symbols. And so you can look on the back of Dan Brown's book and you can see symbols and you go, you know, hey, I was watching uh, the Watchman broadcast and I saw what that means and I know what that means. And people are, people, they're, they're being, becoming aware of what's going on. So one of our watchers, and I, and I want to encourage you to do this, look for a company or a corporation that has a brand logo that all of a sudden they're going to change their logo because everybody's doing it now. They're going to augment it a certain way so that some new age mystic occult symbol pops up. So here's a guy, sends me his uh, website of this hospital, this new health system, this hospital in his area, and he said, Pastor Mike, they like changed their logo, and he said, I saw that, and I'm going, i got to send this to Pastor Mike. I mean, take a look at it. For It's called the Sparrow Health System. Look where it says the art of healing. Now, if you've seen our video on, on the pinnacle of power or practically any of our other, other videos, we talk about uh, this symbol. It is half of a skull and crossbones. The crossbones represent the X chromosome where our DNA is, and the skull represents the Antichrist. They're fused together. Uh, but then look here where it says Sparrow Health System New. Sparrow unveils new brand identity, signaling, here it is, a new era for healthcare in mid-Michigan. And I and just, I mean, stop and think about just the language that they're using. A new, we're, we're on a new world, a new journey, a new era in healthcare. And so you look at their logo. Duh, this is the fusion of opposites. One is above and one is below. And joined together, they form the Mandorla, which is the sacred feminine symbol. And it represents Mystery Babylon the Great, uh, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Speaking of Mystery Babylon the Great, let me get my book back here. Um, the Two Babylons. And I, I have read, I, I, it's one of these things that um, I started reading and I just, I make notes in books when I read them. When I when I was reading uh, the lost symbol, uh, I've got things underlined in here, and and I kept a notebook and things like that because if it jumps out at me, I want to be able to see it again. But in the two Babylons, and this is a tremendous, tremendous book. Um, it talks about goes way into depth, linking all of the mystery religions uh, throughout history together, uh, from India to China to the Middle East to to Africa. I mean, just links it all together. And so I'm, I'm, it, it's kind of this discourse on the goddess 
uh, throughout history. And so I'm reading this. Um, I don't remember what page it was on. Um, but anyway, this is not the copy I was reading anyway. But anyway, I'm reading this, and I see something in here, and it talks about the, the goddess Vesta. Vesta is, um, is the goddess of the hearth, the fireplace, and home. Now think of a goddess that's like in charge of fire. Okay, so you kind of get that, the pit and all that. Anyway, here is, a, here is a temple of Vesta, and this is what it looked like. And so Dan Brown brings out in his book, The Lost Symbol, he brings out that the United States Capitol building was modeled after the temple of Vesta. Duh, okay, Mystery Babylon the Great. And, uh, of course, at the top of the Capitol dome, the skull there, on the top of the skull of the dome uh, is a 19.5-foot idol of Ashtaroth, Ishtar, Diana, Venus, Shingmu, Queen, a Virgin Mary, Queen of Heaven. Uh, it's called the Statue of, of Freedom, but that's really just another word for this goddess that is controlling Washington, D.C. And so anyway, here's a, here's a quote now from this book, The Two Babylons. As the dwelling place of deity, thus is Hestia, or Vesta, addressed in the Orphic hymns. Daughter of Saturn, that's another name for Satan, by the way. Venerable Dame. You know what that is in Latin? Notre Dame. Okay, so they're, they're talking about the same person. The Notre Dame or the Venerable Dame or the Notable Dame, the Notable Woman, is, of course, Mary or Diana or Ishtar or Ashtaroth or any of these others that we're not supposed to worship. Uh, and who loves statues, by the way. She loves having statues of herself all over the place. She is the American... Idol. All right, anyway, who, daughter of Saturn, venerable dame, who dwellest amid great fires, eternal flame. In thee the gods have fixed their dwelling place. So it talks of Vesta, or the temple of Vesta, a temple representing the, the dwelling place of the gods. Now that is the exact opposite of what you find in 1 Corinthians, where it says, No, you're not, that your body is the, is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Our temple is to be reserved for one God only, and that is Jesus Christ. Uh, and the opposite of that, our bodies are the dwelling place of Vesta, or the dwelling place of the gods themselves. So the power of, God, of the gods can rest inside of us. Boy, we're getting like into Genesis chapter 3 because that is exactly, let me read the verse here, that is exactly what Lucifer promised her. For God doth know, verse 5, that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. In other words, the power of the gods is going to be in you. Now, um, he calls it the house and the birthplace of the gods. He associates the, the temple or, or tabernacle as a representative of the woman goddess. Uh, here, is a, here is an image of a Gothic cathedral. Remember, they were all built by the Knights Templar. Uh, these Gothic cathedrals represented, they were pictures of a woman. The interior of these cathedrals was the womb, the doorway, here again, here's that mandorla symbol again. So just for like one, for like 0.5 seconds, use your imagination and guess what that is. And so I want you to think about this. So you you enter in, okay? This is Hieros Gamos. You enter in the building of the cathedral, the womb. You're going in through the mandorla and you're in the womb, okay? You're the seed and you're going into the womb. And then they perform this Eucharistic thing on you and you're baptized with all these pagan occult rituals. And now you're going to exit the door, and you are, in their eyes, born again. Okay? This is such a corruption of, of what the Scripture says. In fact, let me do this. Um, boy, I love it. I love it when God says, hey, Mike, go look at this. Uh, Galatians chapter 5 tells us this, this whole idea. This is why Jesus said you must be born again. And I believe in being born again, but I'm not going to be born again from the temple of Vesta or some uh, mystical, vulgar, symbolic thing that takes place in a Catholic church or any other church for that matter. Um, it says that Paul's talking about these two women that give birth. He's using Hagar and he's using Sarah. And he says in verse 24, Galatians 4, which things are an allegory, which is typology, for these things are the two covenants. 
for the one, uh, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. And I'm here to tell you that this, my friend, is bondage. As long as you're following occult things in this world, you're in bondage. Uh, but of those who follow the law as well, you're in bondage as well. Verse 25, for this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. That's talking about things of the earth. We are born of this earth, and as long as we are in this earth, we are in bondage. Then verse 26, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Not the Roman Catholic Church, or not the mother church, but Jerusalem itself above, heaven. For it is written, Rejoice thou, bear, that, uh, bear not, and things like that. Uh, so I won't read any more of that, but I will tell you that there is a difference. You're not born again by some pagan occult ritual. And I want you to think about this because I want to tell you what, I'm going to say some things might make some people mad. And I love you. I really do. I love you. I love you. I love you. It, it, whether you are uh, Baptist, Nazarene, uh, Presbyterian, for crying out loud, Assembly of God, Pentecostal, Charismatic, I love you. But doctrine is doctrine and truth is truth. And this, Jesus said, thy word is is truth. I'm going to show you something that, that blew me away talking about this, this goddess and this house and the power of the gods in there. Here's the quote from the two Babylons. Thus Philolaus, speaking of a fire in the middle of the center of the world, calls it the Vesta of the universe, the house of Jupiter, the mother of the gods. That's uh, Mary's title. In Babylon, the title of the goddess mother as the dwelling place of God was Saka, or in the emphatic form, Sakta, that is, the temple. Hence, at this day, the great goddesses in India, as wielding all the power of the god whom they represent, are called Sakti, or the tabernacle. We're going to talk about Shakti, which is how it's pronounced now, Shakti. So here, Alexander Hislop wrote about this, and he was, he, he was warning people, don't follow Shakti. Don't follow this concept that you're going to have the power of the gods uh, inside of you. Don't believe this concept. Shakti, here's an image of Shakti here. Of course, she is with her male consort. Of course, he's got, you know, like a serpent all over him and all this stuff. You can see all of the imagery there. She's holding uh, three leaves in her hand. That would be a triple helix. But this term Shakti um, is, a, is a sacred power in the Indian mystic religions. It is the power of the gods. Here, uh, here's a book called Shakti, the Feminine Power of Yoga. Now, I will tell you that all these churches that are doing yoga in their churches, all these all these pastors that are doing yoga, yoga is like, I'm opening the door, familiar spirits. Come on in. That's what yoga is. Yoga and contemplative prayer and all this stuff. Uh, you are receiving the power of the gods, the hearing of the gods inside of you. And there is a, there is a, um, a, um, a, a ritual that they perform. It's called Shakti Pot. And I want you to look at this. This is from Wikipedia. Look this up. Shakti Pot is a Sanskrit word in the Hindu spiritual tra tra tradition that refers to the act of the spiritual energy of Kundalini. Stop right here. Kundalini is the idea that at the base of your spine, 33 bones in your spine, you have a coiled, guess what? Not a coiled Bible, a coiled serpent. And through initiation, that serpent rises up. Okay, and enters into your pineal gland and gives you <gasps> illumination. I now see things more clearly now. It's kind of like, you know, being on LSD, which is another way of doing this. And so Shakti Pot is, it refers to the act of the spiritual energy of Kundalini being conferred on a disciple or student by a guru or spiritual teacher in whom it is already active. Shakti translates as spiritual energy and Pata, watch this now, as descent to fall down. I've taught over and over the difference between falling down and the difference between standing in the Bible. You can argue this if you want. The theme in the Bible of standing, Paul told us to stand, to stand, to stand, to stand, to stand, have, to withstand, having done all to stand. We're told to stand, 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 all through the Bible. And you look at things that fell. Jericho fell, okay? 
The walls of Jericho fell. Babylon has fallen. Dagon has fallen. Uh, when Nebuchadnezzar played the music, get it? Everybody fell. And how did they know who the Christians were? They're the ones that were standing. Big difference. When the Holy Ghost comes on a person, the real Holy Ghost, the one that models the image of this Bible right here, it causes the Christian to stand, not fall. You, you're not going to show me that in the Bible. And so Shakti Pot, and let me read on. I'll show you how this is done. Shakti Pot can be intermediated by the spiritually enlightened master either by transmission of a sacred word or mantra. That is contemplative prayer. A look. That's why they have, the, uh, Peter said they have eyes full of adultery. They can just look and mesmerize people. Uh, a thought or by touch. The touch, watch this now, is usually given to the Anya Chakra or third eye. You know where that is? It's right here. Shakti Pot can be transmitted in a person or at a distance through an object such as a flower or fruit or via telephone or letter. Or Oral Roberts, who, who, who pioneered this, who said, now, God, God told me this. God told me that if you'll just put your hand against mine in the television screen, that that would be a form of contact between you and me, and I would be transmitting the power of the Holy Ghost and healing power on you. Go ahead and touch the television screen. And can you think of millions upon millions of people that believed this nonsense and went up to their television screen? I'm telling you. We live in a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous world. Shakti Pot is uh, evident. It's the awakening of the Kundalini, and it looks like this. Okay, that's what it looks like. You ever seen anything like that before? Okay. That's not in the Bible, people. It's not. It's not in the. Oh, Pastor Mike, laying on of hands. I'm going to read you some scriptures. Okay, because that's what I believe. I don't believe just, and, and I'll say this, and some of you heard my testimony, and again, I love you, Assembly of God people. I do. I, I love you enough to not just, well, we just got to get along, so I'm not going to say anything. I love you enough to tell you the truth. I was going to go for this. I was. Several years ago, back before God started this ministry, I, I told you I was hungry. I was looking. You know, it was after this that I thought, well, maybe I can be a liberal. Maybe that'll, that'll fill my soul. I went to a Pentecostal church. won't tell you what. I went to a Pentecostal church. I went forward. I said, God, here I am. You do whatever in me. If this is real, I want it. If not, God, I don't want it. The guy came by, laid his hands on me. And I didn't flinch. I didn't fall down. I didn't feel shock waves going through my system. And so they cut, and they had a catcher behind me. They had a guy come by, do it again, because it didn't take the first time. And I didn't fall. And all along me, I, 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 all behind me, I heard a woman. Literally, I'm, I'm exactly what she was doing. That's what she was doing. And I said, "Wait a minute. That's that's not tongues." That is babble. That's what babble is. That's what that is. And I said, God, thank you for not turning me over to that. I love you enough to tell you the truth. That kind of manifestation of occult energy is not seen in the scriptures. Nowhere. You don't see it anywhere, people. Oh, the book of Acts. You go study the book of Acts. I don't have time to do it on this broadcast. Let me read you some things that do deal with um, laying on the hands. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, let me read this. Let no man deceive you by any means. Come on, people. Come on. That means by any means. Don't let a Watchman video broadcast from a secret broadcasting compound deceive you. Don't let that happen. Go to the Word of God. Follow the Scriptures. Follow them, follow them religiously. Because that's the only way we're going to be saved is by following the Word of God. And somebody comes along and says, oh, you need to go see so-and-so at the healing center. He's going to do this, and he's going to get rid of all your problems. Don't believe that stuff, people. Let no man be deceived by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a what? A falling away first. So here's Benny Hinn going, 
And remember, Shakti Pot doesn't have to be delivered by touch. It can be delivered by a look or anything like that. And these people are doing what? They're falling away. They're not... <clears throat> this is what's going on. There's going to come a falling away. And I'm telling you what, Benny Hinn and all these guys, they're acting out the scriptures right in front of people's eyes. And they don't... They, they, I don't care what the Bible says. I felt it and it was real. <sighs> I tell you people, I've got a passion. I've got a passion. My broken... My broken life, my, my unclean life, I have a passion for the truth. I'm not perfect, and I don't know it all. And people ask me questions. Pastor Mike, what do you believe about this? What do you, what, our doctrine says this. Do you agree with our doctrine? In some cases, I don't know, people. But I want to know. I want to know the truth. And I know that that's not the truth. When, we, that when the falling away comes, boy, I tell you what, this Bible is so right. Except they're coming, falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed. Now think about Revelation, because when they, they tell you that, that this Shakti pot will, will open up the chakras, whatever those are, the chocolates, they'll open up the chocolates in your life, and your third eye will be opened, and you'll be illuminated, and it will bring the kundalini energy, and you will be, watch this, you will be awakened, and the truth will be revealed. And that's what they're doing. And you have friends and family members that are caught up in this stuff, and you're going to give them a copy of this or tell them to watch it. They're going to hate you. For that. I'm just telling you right now, they're going to hate your guts. Maybe I'm not on the Southern Poverty Law Center's list, but I guarantee you I'm on somebody's list. Don't watch that, Pastor Hoggard. Okay? There's going to come a falling away first, and when they fall, that's when it's going to be revealed to them. And I'm telling you, that Kenneth Hagin and, and, um, and uh, Oral Roberts and all these guys, were, they're, they're setups. They were setting everybody up 50, 60, 75 years ago in these tent revivals. Then along comes Benny Hinn, and then along comes uh, Todd Bentley, and then, and then it's going to get worse. And these people are setting people up to receive the Antichrist, a mark in their right hand or forehead. I'm telling you it's going to happen. What about biblical laying on of the hands? 1 Timothy chapter 2, lay hands on no man, lay hands suddenly on no man. Okay? So in other words, and I just believe in the literal Bible. Don't let anybody say, I'm going to give you, I'm going to impart to you. Boom. I had a guy tell me. I told him, I said, you know, I asked God for dreams and visions one time, and he didn't do it. And he said, I can lay hands on you and give you that impartation. And I said, no, sir, you cannot. If God told me I couldn't have it, then who are you to give it to me? And I was not, I was not going to let him lay hands on me. Don't let anybody just come up to you and say, oh, God's given me. Don't let them do that. Okay? And I will tell you that if you're truly born again, I, I, believe, I believe God will protect you. I really do. God protected me. I mean, that's what, that's what happened. God protected me. Don't let anybody do that. Okay? But then look at, look at laying on the hands. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Uh, if, if, uh, I, I believe, when I was ordained as a, as a preacher, a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, some elders, some men, some godly men, they didn't come over there, oh, I'm going to give you an impartation. They come over to me, and they gently laid their hands upon me. Okay? And, and, they, and I believe, I believe that if a man is to be called of God in, in the New Testament church, that is conferred upon him by biblical authority, which is the elders. That's what I believe in. I believe that from the Scripture. So I believe in laying on the hands. Uh, Jacob laid his hands upon Manasseh and Ephraim and conferred to them the blessing. These guys have taken that, and there's always a counterfeit people, and they have taken that all the way out, and now they're not conferring a blessing on people. They're waking them up to the Antichrist. i got a couple things I just received today, and I thought I'd share them. I appreciate those who send me this stuff. I really, listen, I really do look at your emails. I really do. Um, it's just sometimes there's just so many of them. Uh, my daughter prints a lot of them out, and that way I can focus more on them and pay more attention to them. And if it's something I like, I'll put it in my little tray there and keep it for an, a future thing or whatever. So I appreciate what you're doing and keep sending. Anyway, take a look at this, the Wave Church, okay? How'd you like that? I never, I never could do that very well. 
Uh, that's the wave church. Now, remember, we talked about that. And we've talked about that several times. That's something that God is showing me about the waves of ungodliness, the Aquarian symbol. We talked last weekend about the, the aqua church, the Aquarian church. And here is a church following in that paradigm called the wave church. But I uh, want see if you can catch this now. Take a look at their, their, their logo here. What do you see? What do you see? Come on. Okay. As above, so below. It's right there in front of you. Okay, gotta love it. And oh, by the way, I'm I'm pleased to announce I got my invitation to speak with Ed Young at the C3 conference, Rise of the Iguana. Not really. I didn't. I didn't know. Uh, they wouldn't have me with a ten foot pole. Um, notice the symbolisms here. C. The letter C is a number three. So when you have C and 3 together, what do you have? You have 33. But you also, take a look at the C3 here. You have the infinity symbol, which is a symbol for immortality. It's also a symbol of the number 8. The beast is of the 7. He is the 8th and he is of the 7 and, and, and rises out of the pit and goes into perdition. But this whole iguana thing, I mean, okay, an iguana is like a little bitty dragon. Rise of the iguana. And if you know anything about Ed Young and some of these other guys, you'll get it. Because I'm telling you, these guys are, are going to help unlock the dragon. I promise you, they are. Hope you've enjoyed it this week. Uh, we got our books. Several of you have ordered them. I appreciate that. Uh, the Two Babylons, wonderful book. I did not write it. Uh, By Divine Order and the King James Code, I did write them. And I hope you enjoy them. They're just good. good uh, if you just want... Uh, uh, some good meat on Bible numerics and things like that. I encourage you to get a copy of these books. We're, as long, along with everything else, we're not selling them out of our ministry. Uh, if you write to us and say, Pastor Mike, I'd like a copy of those books, we'll get them to you. Um, we, it does cost more to make these, and it does uh, a, a video. So please uh, remember us uh, in your giving. I do appreciate that. We, we're still trying to maintain... Um, our principles here that God has freely given us, and so we're going to just give what we can. Our watchers' packets are going to go out probably, uh, let's see, not next week, but probably week after that. And um, we've got like, I don't know, 220 people on our watchers' list now. Starting out a year ago, a year ago, we started this thing out with 20 people, and it's increased 200, and we thank God for that. Um, we still have not made any demands from anybody saying, well, we want so much a month and we want this and this. It's not a subscription. It's just a list. We're just giving them away. There are some people who give um, uh, more. There are some people who give less, some people who don't give at all. And um, we, want you to, we want you to pray about that and ask God, you know, God, Pastor Mike sends me all this stuff. Uh, can I do anything for their ministry? I'm not getting your money, people. I, I promise you. And those of you who have met me and have, have broke bread with me, uh, I, you know, uh, we had a family come in and visit us, okay? Uh, they wanted to take me out to lunch. <laughs> I let them pay, okay? I mean, that's, that's me. Um, I, I just live a simple life and trying to do the will of God here. And if you can help us out, I would appreciate it. But if not, we're still going to serve the Lord and do what God told us to do. Anyway, I love you. God bless you. Uh, you can help us out by praying for us. I'm going to be in the, in the hot seat next month down in Van Buren, Arkansas at the Vista Free Will Baptist Church, uh, May the 14th, 15th, 16th. That's over a weekend, so we'll have one of our guys filling in here at our at Bethel Church. But I want you to pray about this meeting. And if you're in the Arkansas area and you'd like to come to that, uh, get a hold of us or get a hold of the Vista Free Will Baptist Church. and they'll show. But I want to tell you, we're going to be dealing with some deep things that are linked with the denomination. And um, well, I'll tell you what, we need God on our side is what we need. Or we need to be on God's side is what we need. So pray for us anyway. Uh, uh, but anyway, keep, uh, keep supporting us. Keep praying for us. Um, keep sending emails if you like. Sending, I've had people send me books. I appreciate that. Um, you know, just, just keep us in your prayers. An email saying, Pastor Mike, thank you for what you're doing. I share those with our people here so that they can know that, you know, there's somebody out there that cares what goes on inside of our one little church. I love you. God bless you. I'm praying for you and appreciate you praying for me. Bye-bye.